Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, to me today at Open Source Summit. And uh, before I start, I would like to ask some questions. Uh, please raise your hand if you're familiar with Kubernetes. That's a lot. Okay, thank <laughs> you. That, that makes uh, it much easier to explain things. Okay, please raise your hand if you're familiar with OpenTelemetry. A bit less, but still, still good. I assume that everyone knows what this multi-tenant means, so I won't ask that question. Although, what you might not know is that if you put these three words together, it will open a portal to HAL for syslog admins, for admins and, and operators as well. And I'm here to help and sh uh, show some loopholes how to avoid that. My name is Chandra Guba, I'm CTO at Axoflow. And I'm an observability enthusiast. I'm working with logs, metrics, alerts, traces for more than 10 years. And I'm an early user of Kubernetes since, I don't know, uh, six years. So, so I, uh, I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> That's why I'm talking about this today. I founded open source projects uh, uh, like Logging Operator, Thanos Operator, and the latest one is Telemetry Controller. And I hope you will like it. But let's start at the beginning. You are all familiar, more or less, uh, with Kubernetes. So I would just go through the logging part. So Kubernetes, compared to traditional environments, is more dynamic. It's designed to be dynamic. So your tools have to follow, you know, like pods coming up and, and go away. And you have to follow that pattern. And Kubernetes allows you to uh, run workloads in an isolated manner as well, uh, like with namespaces, policies, Airbag, whatsoever. But the logging seems to be uh, a missing piece for that. Uh, it, it's an exception. It's a cluster resource. And why is that? When you see on the picture, uh, there is a Kubernetes cluster. There is a node where your uh, pods are running. And uh, Kubernetes does not configure anything, really. I just let the container runtime to grab the standard out of a container and write it on a file on the file system. The basic way to access these logs through the Kubernetes API that calls the kubelet agent on the node and basically doing a tailing on that file, which is fine for you know, debugging or, or development, but uh, really not suited for uh, um, production grade operation. So what you do? Uh, you install an agent on these nodes. And now you can see how we violate the boundaries of namespaces. For example, all the uh, nodes by default running any kind of namespaces. So on the disk, uh, you will have uh, pod logs from different namespaces. The agent will mount these uh, logs and send you to your preferred destination. So at least we have now something production ready because we are collecting the logs and sending to somewhere but it can cause other problems. Uh, you, have, you might have a complex logic at the edges on the node level, and uh, rollout new configuration can take a lot of time for uh, Kubernetes clusters with 1,000 nodes or more. So this is a half solution. Still, it's kind of the official one that you can read on the Kubernetes documentation. A little bit evolved form of the same architecture is having an aggregator in place that means that you have a minimal configuration on the edges, just collecting the logs, sending to an aggregator, and the aggregator will do the hard stuff, parsing, regular expression, routing, buffering for destination, etc. So in this way, you can um, uh, uh, leave your nodes alone and uh, uh, let the aggregators do the hard lifting. And uh, one of my former or actually active uh, project logging operator is, uh, is utilizing this approach. So it's uh, deploying a Fluent bit on each uh, node and having a Fluent D stateful set to, to the, the parsing and stuff. This uh, uh, approach has its problems as well, but today I'm not talking about logging operator. We will uh, reach the telemetry controller stuff and I will talk about it that later. So that was the Kubernetes logging. Let's see the open telemetry part. So what is open telemetry? It's a collection of APIs, SDKs, and tools to instrument, generate, collect, and export telemetry data. It basically means that it provides a protocol, which is a really good thing to do because there were no protocol before that official um, goal was to, you know, how I transport telemetry stuff to, uh, from A to B. 
uh, there were some you know like uh, tool oriented like fluentd had the fluent protocol uh, firebit had the lumberjack protocol all firewalls appliances has the syslog protocol but there was no modern protocol to handle the telemetry data like log metric stasis and uh, what uh, people did is to fall back on general protocols like http or grpc http is a good protocol it gives you a lot of benefits you can use chase and payload you can send whatever you want but you lose the uh, flexibility of knowing what's uh, uh, what's traveling uh, on the cable i will talk that a bit later as well and the other part of open telemetry is there is a reference uh, implementation uh, in go which uh, uh, is uh, widely adopted by big players i mean if you are um, you know, searching for supported distribution, AWS providing or Cisco or whatever uh, an open telemetry agent. So we are slowly but steadily, at least in the Kubernetes world, uh, go for the standardization of, of telemetry uh, protocols and, and agents. So let's talk a little bit about this protocol. Uh, I won't go very deep, but uh, I think it's important to understand why it's a beneficial thing to do. So Open Telemetry Protocol is based on gRPC, uh, an open standard, and it's a binary protocol. So it's more concise than just uh, sending text like a JSON. It provides out of box encryption, compression. A lot of older protocols provide some, and HTTP provides uh, some out of the box but these are all standardized here. Uh, it provides application level acknowledgements, uh, which doesn't look like a very new thing, but for example, syslog protocols from firewall switches, whatever, don't do that. And it's very easy to lose uh, messages uh, in that way, as well as load balancing. Uh, some protocols just utilize pure TCP. And if you try to load balance TCP, that's, that's hell of a job. It's, it's not good for you. <laughs> And um, this protocol has a structured uh, scheme as well. Uh, if you are uh, working with Kubernetes, uh, one thing is containers, applications, workloads, and the other part of Kubernetes, which I think the, the, the best thing that it uh, brought to the table is metadata. We got metadata almost on every single resources that uh, is in Kubernetes, and you can uh, group your resources, you can create rules based on uh, uh, metadata. So these are very important. Uh, in Kubernetes log, on average, uh, a log message is half metadata and half the content. So uh, this structure schema introduces metadata as first class citizen. And why it's good for you? Because um, it can do intelligent, intelligent batching. So when you got an event from a container, it's, it is at least a record, a body, something that the application wrote and the timestamp. And uh, Open Telemetry provide you a structured schema uh, about uh, metadata in a resource scope and on a record level. The key values are the metadata that attached to uh, your uh, um, container logs. A trivial example, if you have a pod running label app uh, equals nginx, then in the resource label, there will be an app nginx uh, associated. So the first approach was to attach this metadata to every log line. And if I'm saying that you know half of the metadata, half of the uh, log is metadata, then you can imagine that if you have a lot of logs, then you have a lot of metadata, and it's all right in that. So Open Telemetry uh, provides you with this intelligent batching. The resource scope a scope is mostly used for tracing purposes, but the resource and record level are uh, very much used uh, in a log perspective. So all the resources that uh, you know, logs are coming in uh, from a container are aggregated together. You are usually not sending logs uh, one by one or line by one, line, line by line, but you know, like in you know, batches of, of thousands. So you can save a lot of uh, uh, bandwidth with it. And I was talking a lot about you know, saving uh, bandwidth, you know, chipping some bytes here and there, compression, encryption. And there are some information about why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm talking with people who are logging a lot. Those are mostly security logs, but it can range from a terabyte a day to around um, hundreds of terabytes a day. And uh, machines generate a lot of data. 
and it's uh, growing around uh, you know like a quarter by year which means that exponential growth that in three years you double your data so if you have you know like a year one petabyte in three years you will provide uh, uh, two petabyte and so on and so on and it's exponential so if you can save here and there that's uh, a lot of uh, money you can save I just uh, had a small calculation. This is just, I think, AWS list price for a, an egress uh, network uh, cost. So if you are logging 10 terabytes, which is uh, for like uh, healthcare, banking, or insurance companies, is, is uh, not too much. It's around uh, $30,000 a month, just the pure egress cost. If you can just, you know, uh, one tenth it, you saved a lot of money. And the third part of the, uh, uh, the presentation is the multi-tenancy. Kubernetes provides isolation based on namespace levels. So it would be an obvious choice to, okay, use namespace as tenants. So I can lock a tenant into a namespace. It sounds good. However, in practice, this is not what's happening. I'm not sure how it evolved this way, but the examples out there using Rancher Capsule, all of them have their own tenant resources uh, for one reason because they are storing the configuration in the tenant resources and the other is that they are providing more namespaces to a tenant because if you are a large tenant and you want to organize your workloads there is no other way than namespaces in Kubernetes so um, we just accept that uh, tenant uh, is, is a group of namespaces but how you uh, connect the tenants with the namespaces again metadata you can label those namespaces, have a tenant label, so it's uh, immediately much easier to identify which namespace uh, belongs to uh, which workload. Yeah, but we have to go back on the node level. We had the uh, namespaces and pods, uh, and uh, with the tenants, it didn't get easier either. So we, we don't know about uh, you know, which, which tenant it, uh, the message came from. We have one leverage, that uh, Kubernetes has this pattern of files like uh, namespace underscore pod underscore containers. So you can identify pod and uh, namespace, but you can't identify tenants uh, by default, unless you are doing some tricks. So uh, a basic, uh, and not just for a multi-tenant, but I think for a basic Kubernetes logging, this is what's happening. You have an agent, tailing files, so you get the content of the file and the timestamp. You, you are parsing the path, the file path, where you parse the logs, so you got the namespace, the bot, and the container ID. Then you query the Kubernetes API for all the other metadata, pod labels, namespace labels, whatever, and then you are able to route uh, your logs to your tenant. Remember that you don't have any other tool set inside Kubernetes that helps you identify which uh, logs come to uh, where. So it sounds simple. Four easy steps, just do it while I'm talking about this. Uh, I won't go into very much details, but during my last six years, I uh, fight with this problem. <laughs> so believe me, it can, it can have uh, issues coming from here and there, and you would never expect. The first very big problem is that it's a huge shared configuration. So uh, when you have an administrator of the Kubernetes cluster, it would be his responsibility to manage all the namespaces, all the tenants, and uh, if you have no tooling, you would do it by hand. And uh, uh, I will show you later uh, a simple open telemetry configuration. It's around 100 or 200 lines of code, and it's just a uh, simple example of without tenants or anything. The noisy neighbors. Um, there can be different kind of problems. The first is configuration conflicts. That's that that uh, ruin the day-to-day -day operation for multi-tenant systems, uh, I can assure you. Resource exhaustion, uh, all kind of resource exhaustion. Um, for example, uh, one tenant doing extensive parsing or extensive filtering that can eat up a CPU on a node. Um, uh, back pressure, this is another resource exhaustion. Uh, by design, if you are building a pipeline in open telemetry, you are tailing files from a node, sending to an output. The, Naive approach uh, is to have a file source, uh, 
uh, processors and the pipeline and several outputs. And if any of these outputs fails or, or doesn't uh, respond, the whole pipeline will shut down. So it's very easy to just disrupt the uh, whole log flow for other tenants. And it can be just, you know, like a misconfiguration, uh, TLS certificate rotation, and I have around 100 different <laughs> scenarios that I'm, I'm at around the years. And um, the problems just go on and they got even com more complex. They, uh, tenants want to do error handling, what happens if the parsing fails, what happens when an exception is uh, going through the, uh, the regular logs or, or buffering happenings. Is it okay or not okay? What if the buffers fills the node uh, disk? This is everyday problems uh, uh, that uh, administrator faces. So instead of going uh, through one by one of each problem, how to solve it with, I don't know, 10 or 20 lines of configuration, we decided to write a new uh, operator called telemetry controller. And telemetry controller turns telemetry even streams into Kubernetes resources. It brings back the isolation and access control that is missing for logs data. And I really like Kubernetes because there are a lot of best practices. If you need certificates, you use Cert Manager. If you want to scale pod, you use horizontal pod auto scaler or whatever uh, the latest, greatest tool for it. And there are, uh, I, I created logging operator to uh, solve that issue, but um, I, I tried to solve everything, so it became a big mess. <laughs> uh, and uh, we sat uh, back to the table and, and okay, now we will solve one problem at a time. And this is how you can get from your logs in a reliable way to a tenant. And it doesn't matter if you, it's one tenant because you are uh, owning your cluster and doesn't uh, require multi-tenancy, but it should be as simple as doing one tenant and multiple tenants as well. Um, uh, why we are doing this, Open Telemetry Collector, the tool, promised to solve uh, the telemetry problems and it's solving but at a low level. What I was saying, you can you know, create a, a lot of configurations just with simple examples and when you are doing in a multi-tenant manner, you are doing the same again and again, it's error prone and it can be generated, so it's an abstract abstraction layer on top of open telemetry, not exchanging it or it's, it's coexisting with it. And uh, I wanted to provide a well-defined opinionated way how it should be done. Uh, it, it can be considered as a blueprint, you know, you have a Kubernetes, this is how you should do logging. If you have this kind of problem, this is the solution, that kind of problem, that is the solution. And it's much, I, I find it hard to just use documentation because it's just too much. So if you have a tool with the right, like 10 lines of configuration, that's what people will use, nothing else. They will just throw out the others. So uh, I will change to like switching between slides and demo because I like to learn by doing it. So uh, I, I'm sorry in advance if, <laughs> if it fails, but I will do it live. So let's see the time at controller model, how it works. And I think this is the most important slide of, of my presentation. All the others is just, you know, like uh, having the context for it. So on the left side, there is the Kubernetes uh, uh, logs. And as you can, I, I could uh, draw like nodes and everything, but it doesn't matter. You just have a lot of logs and you know the namespace and pods and maybe the labels of, of those logs. Our first task is to collect those. So we need an agent. So the collector, yeah, uh, our first custom resource, I, I haven't mentioned, but I, I, I assume that you know that a telemetry controller is a Kubernetes operator, so it uses custom resources, and I will go through the custom resources, how to use it. So the collector is the first uh, resource. Um, it re, uh, represents a te an open telemetry collector daemon set on your cluster. So it got its basic configuration, like volume mounts and I don't know, uh, buffer sizes, so the agent level configuration. And an important pi uh, part of this is the tenant selector. The tenant selector tells which tenant the collector should send logs to. It's an important part because 
I uh, uh, met use cases that uh, are not running just one agent as a daemon set, but multiple. There are several use cases for it. For example, hard multi-tenancy. If you want to pin uh, nodes to tenants, you are usually end up uh, running different uh, daemon sets for, for those different nodes and have this, uh, you know, like scheduling uh, barricades to prevent from, uh, you know, spanning to other tenant nodes. The other part is uh, people, I don't know why, but running multi-arc setups as well, running uh, Linux, ARM and Windows nodes in the same cluster. So for that, you need different kind of configuration and images. Yeah, I, I was like that, <laughs> but um, uh, they wanted to solve, so we have to solve them. So you can have multiple collector for Windows nodes, for uh, ARM nodes, for, for Linux nodes as well. So let me apply. Yeah, and uh, I forgot to introduce our environment. So this is the Minikube. Uh, can you see it back as well? Great. So this is a Minikube running on my uh, computer and I pre-installed the telemetry controller. It's not that, you know, it's, it's just a controller. <laughs> and it installs a telemetry operator as well. So we are instructing open telemetry at the end of the day. And I installed OpenObserve, which is, um, you can imagine OpenObserve as, a, as an, op, an elastic search, open search. It can accept logs uh, in uh, OTL PGRPC format, so native uh, open telemetry, and it's very easy to query uh, uh, logs here and demonstrate. So, so this is uh, my uh, environment, and uh, I have the same uh, resources uh, mm, prepared here that what I have on the slides. So I just uh, created uh, the collector. I will show that it's basically the same that I show you. And uh, we have a, a, a trick uh, for telemetry collector. You can use the kubectl get telemetry all command minus uh, uh, a for all namespaces to list all the resources that managed by open telemetry. It's a very convenient way to see what's happening. So now I only have a collector uh, a resource that's applied to zero tenants because I don't have tenants yet. So back to the slide. We created the collector. It's a simple collector, no hard multi tenancy, nothing. So the second uh, element is a tenant. I already told you that Rancher and Capsule, they all have these tenant resources. So why we are not using that one? It's exactly because that, because there are different solutions. Uh, maybe you don't want to use any hard tenancy or you have a policy engine, a custom one, whatever. So we are uh, created our own tenant. And it um, turns out that in Kubernetes, to, to triggering from run resource to create another resource is very easy. So it's, it's, not, it's easy to write a generic uh, controller that just you know, copy a rancher project resource and create the telemetry controller tenant resource from it. And in the tenant, uh, you can uh, uh, sell, uh, uh, set a couple of things. Uh, the, one of the important part is the labels. I already told you that here we have the collector match label uh, um, with the collector uh, cluster metadata. And this tenant has this collector cluster metadata. These resources, both the collector and the tenant are cluster-wide resources. This is because we wanted to represent that they are, um, they are dangerous in a way that you don't want to allow any user to edit it because this is how you define the boundaries between the tenants. So they are not very important to only have administrator access. And you see that a collector can access all the logs. When you set a tenant, you set what namespaces the tenant should own. There are two kinds of namespaces, the subscription and the log source namespace. The subscription namespace, uh, we will uh, see that later. Those uh, include the configurations uh, from the tenant that's coming from the tenant. And the log source namespace tells the tenant uh, and later the collector what, uh, which namespaces I can uh, receive logs from. Uh, let's apply the tenant as well. There you go. 
So I will always just, you know, uh, reiterate with this telemetry command. I have a collector, I have a tenant, and you already see in the status that it calculated that we have a log source namespace web and uh, we have zero subscriptions. If I see the web namespace, I will see that it has this tenant label. I don't have Rancher capsule or anything enabled. I just put the uh, namespace uh, by hand uh, to, uh, for this demonstration. So, and now uh, the subscription. So this subscription is the namespaced object. This is used by tenants to subscribe to logs. So the idea behind this, that as an administrator, I can define where you want to collect logs, but you might not want to collect everything because there are a lot of logs in Kubernetes. You just might want a part of it. So you can subscribe to this pool of logs and get what is interesting for you. So the first implementation is just having an OTTL, the Open Telemetry Transformation Language, filtering expression that you can uh, uh, set in a subscription. So if you set like uh, the uh, pod label is nginx or, or whatever, then you just only get that uh, po uh, logs that coming from the pod that has the label nginx. So it's that's trivial. We are planning to have some filtering language on top of it or at least restricting because OTTL is you know, widely used to uh, uh, even transform the logs. We don't want to allow that because we want to minimize the things that an edge can do. There is two uh, uh, scenario that we defined uh, based on where you uh, send the uh, logs. And uh, in the subscription, you can uh, uh, set an output for your, for your logs. So you filter what you need and you set somewhere. So that subscription is all about. Let's apply the subscription as well. So now we have an almost working uh, setup because I have a, a, a tenant. So I have a collector that watches the tenant. The tenant has a subscription that we'll send uh, to somewhere and uh, we need to create the output still. So the last resource, of course, is an output. Uh, output is uh, only the configuration of that output, TLS, uh, URL, password, whatever. In the logging operator, we had some sophistication with the secrets, you know, getting uh, credentials from the secrets. Uh, it's still in progress in uh, telemetry controller, but it doesn't prevent us from, you know, like doing some demo. And I was talking about, you know, like the two scenario, what we expect our users to do. One is to have an aggregator. So that's what was the kind of problem that in logging operator, we tried to solve the collector and aggregation part as well, and it became too complex. Now we just solve the collection and expect the uh, user to solve the aggregation by, for example, running an open telemetry. And if you are running an open telemetry and you expect that, yeah, I filtered for Nginx logs, it's, it will be a very trivial processor that I just parse the Nginx logs and send to somewhere. So it minimizes the complexity of your own aggregator. The second situation is when you have like this soft tenancy. So for example, a company running a Kubernetes for different uh, teams. So you need some uh, tenancies, so there won't be any noisy neighbors, but you send for the same Loki destination on open or Elasticsearch. So it doesn't really matter to create uh, separate outputs with each tenant. You can reuse these outputs and it's still work in progress, but it will be multi-tenant by, uh, by design. I mean, for example, Loki can accept a tenant header. So when you have the, the uh, tenant enabled output, it will set the tenant header as well. So the multi-tenancy will uh, land in Loki like with the, with the org ID and everything set uh, in advance without you have to touch anything. So that's, that's the two case. Uh, we have the first case ready, the second is in progress. There are some problems with setting gRPC metadata dynamically in open telemetry, but that's another story. So let's see, I will apply the output as well for my open observe. And if everything works as expected, now I have the output uh, for my subscription as well. 
and uh, in the open observe, I got my logs. And uh, uh, because I, I haven't, you know, like started an aggregator, but uh, this is an OTRP uh, formatted logs. And you can see that you can, you have the tenant subscription and all the metadata, all the pod labels and, and other information ready. So when you put it in your aggregator, you can use, for example, the subscription field to route your logs. So you don't have to do this again and again. You can rely on the collector to pre-process your, uh, uh, your message. And uh, let's get back to the slide. And uh, after that, I will show the uh, aggregate version as well. I put it together yesterday, so I hope it will work. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to um, re, uh, uh, summarize what is the purpose of the controller. So telemetric controller is not a generic open telemetry collector. It doesn't have all the you know, bits and bytes on the file tuning. It's a single purpose uh, thing to collect uh, the logs and provide isolation between tenants and provide you the capability of subscri subscribing to the exact logs that what you need. And it doesn't provide to be an aggregator with all the, you know, transformation regex parses whatsoever. If you want to do that, and uh, this is this is my aggregator example. Uh, just a second. I can. So I try to. Zoom it a bit, but I fail on that. Anyway, I will describe and I will put this all on GitHub so you can, you know, play around with it. You know, just have a mini cube and, and anything. So I will create a new uh, uh, output and a new subscription. The subscription will be very similar to what I already had uh, because it's kind of the same, and the aggregator. Uh, and an output that will send not to directly to open observe but to my aggregator and this is uh, an example of my open telemetry aggregator which uh, instead of talking about I will just start it so it's easier to follow So this is a generic open telemetry resource uh, handled by the open telemetry, con uh, open telemetry operator. So when I check, this is the web aggregator collector. This is an open telemetry running as a stateful set. Uh, I can even, maybe it's much easier to see here the So this is the telemetry con collector without, you know, the, all the tenant nonsense. And there are some basic uh, configuration. This is the output for my open observe. I will have uh, an output for the same obs open observe, uh, just in a different stream name. This is kind of the index of, of for open observe. I have parsing statement. This is an Nginx uh, log parsing statement because I'm just, you know, generating Nginx access log in the web namespace. And I'm listening on an LTLP protocol, which I defined in the output. So when I, I apply the uh, open telemetry, I will apply the output and the new subscription. So if I go back to my favorite command to print out everything that's happening in my cluster, I will have, you know, like another um, output and other uh, subscription and hopefully another logs in the open observe and these logs are parsed nginx logs you can you have the access code the method whatever so you can do any transformation and this is a very simple example but you can do GOIP you can do filtering you can uh, do whatever you want uh, with your logs um, and uh, 
so that's that's about the demo. I got some in progress and upcoming. So I given some talk uh, about you know logging on Kubernetes, and one of them was about the four different log sources that Kubernetes have or might have. And the first is containers. I just talked about containers, but there are different uh, sources like applications. Uh, it can be different kind, like uh, you know, like fat container, Java application, storing files on the container file system. Uh, logging operator has a solution for injecting sidecar into the port, tailing the files from there. Uh, we want to add this source to telemetry controller as well, or consuming directly from the SDK. Open telemetry SDK can send logs out directly. The platform logs, the hosts, events, Kubernetes node logs, Kubernetes events logs. Logging operator had some solution for that as well. We will migrate it to here and external logs as well. Some, some uh, people use Kubernetes as, you know, like the log processor for the company. So they have, you know, uh, pull and push metrics like pulling from uh, SaaS providers or uh, receiving to ingresses, uh, a lot of different kind of logs. Um, and we have still some work ahead. Monitoring the pipeline is an interesting uh, case here because um, when you have such complex systems, they become itself a monitor, a moni uh, they, they require monitoring. So if something goes wrong, your tenant saying, I'm not getting the log, what's happening? So what we do is that we transform almost everything that you see on the kubectl statuses into metrics and we'll have dashboards so you can monitor that. And the resources, the controller report back to the resources if there is a fault, you know, like if, if the configuration doesn't fly or if there is no output uh, uh, defined for a subscription and that's the problem. So it's much easier to just, you know, pinpoint the problem. The output has already uh, uh, told you about the out-of-box multi-tenancy. I think that's a very interesting use case and the secret handling is, is, is uh, missing a bit. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we want to define the default route for subscription. If you remember to, the, to this picture, you can subscribe to, the, to some of the logs uh, and uh, you can you know, subscribe two times even if you, if you need some because you want to do different transformation or whatever reason. But because if it's, it's a pool and you subscribe, you don't know what left in the pool. So there will be a default, you know, unmatched rule that, you know, I want to get everything else that I haven't subscribed for. Uh, this is a simpler use case just to not, you know, like miss anything from the logs. And another interesting use case is the shared logs. There was a, uh, a, a guy who had an ingest access log and it was a multi-tenant cluster and the ingest, uh, the, the, the Nginx was shared between the tenants and he wanted to uh, send the, uh, the specific uh, uh, access log by vhost to the specific tenants. So you want it to parse the logs and send each tenant to uh, their respective logs. And I have a work in progress for that as well. And if you attend to KubeCon in uh, Salt Lake City, I will show that to you. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, all from me today. I collected some useful links uh, here. And uh, I think we have some time for some questions. Yes, please. To be honest, uh, that there was an intention in me to not talk about that because I wanted someone to ask it. And if no one would ask, I would ask for myself. <laughs> The thing is that when you do uh, logs metric traces in Kubernetes, metrics are usually something like application level. So if you have a namespace, you have an application running, you want to monitor it, you install a Prometheus, you can just grab the metrics. You don't have to do this whole around because it's not collecting on the node level. And the same with traces. So uh, it is possible, definitely. And there is one use case I have in mind that, uh, that could benefit from it. But to be honest, there was no intention to do this. Every, every tenant just do it uh, for themselves. There is one exception, collecting traces. So you can uh, set up um, trace collection to be as, uh, the collector to be as close as to the application as possible. So you can have a sidecar, but it can be a big overhead. 
but you can have a daemon set running open telemetry, receiving traces, and this is the, I don't remember, but this the root to host or something that, that uh, each, each component will use the local node uh, uh, collector for it. And in that way, yes, that's, that's absolutely, and the same will apply. So we concentrated on logs, but because of open telemetry handle the same way as everything, adding tracing is our metric is no problem. If there is no more question, then thank you for listening to me.